All right. So welcome, everybody. This is our Mixed Game Madness lesson. And tonight's lesson is on stud. And who doesn't like a good stud, right? So I'm kind of excited because this is the game I learned on. And um, I think a lot of people who are in my age bracket were actually taught this game before any other game. Um, this is the game I actually sat around the kitchen table with with my family. And we would use uh, sometimes beans, <laughs> you know, frijoles, uh, pint, pinto beans, you know, as bedding ante stuff or, or candy. Candy, of course, was my favorite. I didn't last very long, but that's because I ate it and uh, I was out. But um, so some of you might have a history if you ever played this when you were a child. Uh, this is before Texas Hold'em and all that other stuff was ever taught. So uh, if you were in our meeting last week where we discussed Raz, this is also a what we call a stud game. Uh, Raz is a stud game. Of course, stud is a stud game. Stud high-low is a stud game. Um, and really what that means is that the format in which it's dealt is when you are gonna get two cards that are face down and one card that comes up. And those are the starting hands. So um, I just wanna do a real quick refresher if, if you weren't with us last week. Flop games are Texas Hold'em and Omaha. Um, those are the kinds of games where you get two cards in your hand and then there's a flop of three cards, a turn and a river. In this game, there are two cards down dealt to each person and one card up. And then there are, uh, shoot, what street is that called? It's uh, Fourth Street, Fifth Street, Sixth Street, and then the river. There's a lot of streets in this map, okay? Um, some people call the card, the two cards is your down cards or your whole cards, and the card that gets turned up uh, dealt to you, some people call that a door card. I call it an information card because that's the beginning of the information that you can see from the other players, what they have and what they can see that you have. Okay, I call it the information card, but it, technically it's called the door card. Um, so how this is dealt, how this game is played is that every single person has to ante. In flop games, you have the small blind and the big blind. And in stud games, everybody has to ante. Okay, let's say we're playing four eight stud, $4, $8. It's also played um, limit 90% of the time, 99% of the time. It's a limit game. Um, and we're going to pretend that we're going to be playing a four eight game. That means that the bedding would be $4 and $8. Uh, $4 for the first three card round. And then on 4th Street, it would be $4. Then on 5th Street, 6th Street, and the river card would be $8. So it's a limit game, 4-8. Now, in order to start the bidding or to start the, uh, the game, we would have to have a forced bet because there's no blind. So the forced bet is called an ante. And that means every person who is receiving a hand has to put up a dollar, okay? It's usually a dollar ante. So if there's 10, uh, it's actually usually eight people that are playing a stud game uh, in the smaller tables that you used to see in poker rooms, now it's 10 and they still play stud uh, with 10 people, which is harder only because you run out of cards. Um, yeah, or potentially run out of cards, depending on how many people stay in the in the game um, and see, you know, uh, further streets beyond the, the first the first three cards. So everybody's going to put in our ante. I'm the dealer and the dealer always starts the deal to the left. It doesn't go by, uh, you know, the big blind or, or any of the dealer buttons. We don't have that in this game. So we're starting to the left, whoever's seated that's putting out an ante, I give a card to. So I'm gonna do one down, one, 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 then the second card down, two, 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 and then when the third card, the door card, the information card is gonna get up. So it goes up, 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 until everybody has an up card. 
in last week's, we talked about in RAS that the person who has the bring in, and that's where the action starts in the game of stud. That bring in person in RAS was the person who had the highest card that showed up. Instead, it's the opposite. It's the card that has the lowest because this is stud high, okay? Remember, we're doing everything off of, of high hands. Um, and the same, this is regular poker. So the best cards, it's the best five out of the seven, and you're still gonna be looking for straights and flushes and pairs and all those things that you want um, in order to have a good winning hand in poker. So the regular rules apply as far as, um, hand rankings in this game. So, uh, so now we're gonna look around the table and I'm gonna actually show you some cards that I set up. And the reason I set them up this way is because these are pretty damn good starting hands, okay? And I wanted to show you what good starting hands were in, to, just to start off. So I'm gonna spin my little computer and we're gonna see some hands, and then we got it. Somebody's got to tell me if it's if it looks good. Um, can you see? Uh, yeah, uh, see the the top ones. I don't see the top ones, Martin. Uh, Lupe. You do not see the top ones. No, do not. That's better. All right, let me scooch okay. this in. Okay, and I only see four hands. That's all I put out. Okay. Four hands. There's four players at this little table. Okay, okay. Tilt, it, tilt it back just a little bit more. Towards away? Yeah. Better, that, better. Is that good? That's, that's a good, that's good. Okay. So now we have, these people were all dealt two down, one up, two down, one up, two down, one up, two down, one up. Um, those are some pretty good cards, except for maybe the six of clubs. It, in the information that we've received here, is that a king is a good card, right? And queens are good and aces are excellent. Aces are high in this game, unlike in Raz where they're low. So in order to start the action instead, the person who has the lowest card on the table has to come in with a forced bet. It's called the bring in. That bring in and in a four eight game is gonna be $1, okay? That's the minimum that they can do. Now, if you've got like a monster hand underneath with these cards, you can actually bring it in for the full amount, which the full bet at, in, a, in a limit game for 4-8 would be $4 to complete the bet, okay? So you can only do $1 or $4, okay, in a limit game. So we're gonna take a peek at what these people have, okay? Well, let's do that one last. Okay, we're gonna come over here because this one got called, or this one brought it in for one. We're just gonna say one. And we come over here and we see that his, this person's whole cards is a jack, a queen, and a king, which is three to a Broadway, and two of them are diamonds, so two to a flush. That's not a terrible hand right there. That's a pretty good hand, okay? Um. I don't think it's a raising hand, but it's definitely a calling hand. So now let's come down here to the bottom left. Pocket aces and an ace queen. And there's two to a flush. Actually, there's two to a royal flush in this, okay? Excellent, excellent, excellent hand to start with. Now, we know this person right here already sees that one of their aces is the information they received is one of their aces is gone so their chance of getting trips has now gone way down right they'll they really only have one more ace in the deck to make their hand really super strong but there are no there's one club out so that takes away one of their club options so every time you look at what other people have you're examining the strength of your own hand um because they are giving you information. Which cards in here? And you've got to be good at counting what's out there. So if you can't see something on the board, you make sure that you ask the dealer to tell you what's on the board. If, you, if you're not sure if that's a club or a spade, ask them. 
they'll tell you what that card is, okay? Um, the reason being is because if this person folds, you have to remember what they folded so that you know how many outs you have. Like when you're counting outs in Hold'em, you have to do the same thing in Stud or any other of the flop game or the uh, Stud games, because, but it's, you have to do it by memory. In Hold'em, you don't know what they folded. In Stud, you're getting some information as to what's left in the deck, okay? So this is a monster hand. Let's see what the fourth player has underneath here. They've got three spades, that's three to a flush. That's a strong hand as well. Now, we're gonna say that this person came in with $1, okay? The next action came over to here. This person probably, if they're feeling pretty confident, they probably completed it to $4. Or if they're just saying, you know what, I don't know. if I get another face card, yes, then it's a stronger hand. If I get another diamond, yes, it's a stronger hand. Maybe they just go ahead and call the bring in, which is $1. They have that option, okay? Then the action comes down to this person who has the pocket aces. 99.9%, .9 if it hasn't been completed, they're going to complete it to the $4, but if it's already been completed to them, they're gonna raise this hand. This is a monster hand. Pocket aces with two to a, a, a flush and two to a royal even, or even two to a Broadway. So the information that, the, that this hand also has is one of their sixes is gone, one of their aces is gone, and one of the kings for a Broadway is gone, okay? So they have to remember that three of their cards in the deck are already not going to come out for them. Now let's look and see what this original. So we went, bring in, call the bring in, raise. This one has three, looks around, doesn't see any other spades out there. They're gonna peel one off, they call the raise. Me personally, I'm not usually doing that, but they do have the ace, so they are calling to a nut hand. Does that make sense? You always want to improve. You want to call to a nut hand. So let's go back to this guy over here. Monster. Ginormous monster, okay? Anytime you have three cards in your hole, it is the strongest hand you possibly could have because you already have a made trip hand, okay? If you wind up with a pair over here or another six for quads, they don't know that. People don't know what you have underneath. So if it came down, they were being sneaky and they, call, they remember they just did $1 for the bring in. This person called it. This person raised it. This person called the raise. Guess what this person's gonna do? They're gonna re-raise that shit. <laughs> They're like, what? I got a killer hand here. I got the devil's hand right here. So, oh, darn. But anyway, this is a monster, okay? So they raise. This one says, oh, okay, fine. We're just gonna pretend that they all called the raise, okay? So everybody's in here. Is this making sense so far? You guys getting it? Donnie, you think it's getting set? Absolutely, good. you're doing a really good job. And we got, we got yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. now, in stud, the dealer has already done all this. The dealer's going to burn a card, and then remember it's gonna start from his left, and I'm gonna say the sixes were the left, okay? So they're gonna give the second information card. Six, a 10, a deuce, Ugh. A four and a deuce. Okay. The action starts with the highest cards on this board. There are no pairs. Usually it would start with whoever has a pair. But in this case, the ace deuce is highest on any of these. So the ace deuce makes the decision on the betting. They can either bet that hand or they can check that hand. Okay. So in this instance, the ace, they did not improve. What did I tell you? This is a game of improvement, right? They didn't improve. So they checked it. They came over here. The aces still probably feel that they've got a decent hand. They might either check or bet. Because this person raised me, 
I think personally, I would probably just check it because I didn't really improve. I didn't catch a second pair or anything like that. I just still have pocket aces, which is a good hand. So I'm going to check it. It's going to come around over here. They're going to bet for sure because they still have trips under their monster hand. They're going to bet it. This deuce over here did not really improve. They didn't get any kind of paint. They didn't get any pairs. They didn't get anything. If they're smart, they only have two to a flush, two to a flush, they would fold. I'm going to fold them because that's nonsense. Don't ever call that. It's going to be all kinds of your money. Don't do that. Okay. Get back down here. That deuce really didn't improve their hand either. But let's say they're being cheeky and they want to peel off one more just to see if they get a flush card or a pair or an ace or, you know, people do this all the time. So we're going to say that they called. So uh, the bet, the call, the aces go ahead and call, right? Okay, next hand or next card. Burn card down. They get a four. They get a five. They get a three. All right. Those are all crappy cards. Nobody improved really on the information cards. Remember, you're just looking at these these cards right here, the, the three cards. Um, so the ace is still high. The ace starts off the betting. They're gonna say probably check. The aces probably are going to check because this one keeps betting. Now, if this person actually bets out one more time, you have to think that they either have kings under here or they have queens or they have rolled up sixes because they're being very aggressive. It's, an in, it's, it's a game of information. You only see a six, a 10, and a four. You're thinking, well, obviously, he doesn't have a pair of sixes because <laughs> he wouldn't be so aggressive with a pair of sixes. Those are crappy cards. So let's say that this one actually goes ahead and uh, bets it out again. This hand has to go away because they didn't pick, they picked up all black. That only works in, what's that show? That one that says, I got all black. So they're gone. Aces, let's just say the aces say, okay, I'm going to peel off one more because they're stupid, but they're going to do it anyway. So burn down. Nine of clubs, queens. So these two players, this one's going, damn it, I didn't get a pair. This one's doing the freaking happy dance because they've got two pair and they're aces and queens and those are great cards. And these, remember, these four cards right here are showing up. When the dealer deals to you, they're usually going to say queens. They'll, they'll usually, when they'll, they'll call out a pair. Some, we're learning that some houses call out every street so that you know what it is. The houses that I play in don't, but, you know, we see that there's queens here. So he's going to say queens. The action is going to go to queens. Now, this person is going to bet, okay? But remember, this is your hidden information in your whole cards. Oh my gosh, my manicure sucks. Anyway, information in the whole cards suck. Because this person who has the trip sixes is now nervous because remember that person bet out with a queen? Remember they bet out that information was a queen? They may feel that this person has another queen under here. They could have pocket queens. Because over there, remember that hand over there? It, they didn't get a queen up. It was a king up. So they don't know that under here, one of the queens is gone. There's no information for them to understand that. So this one bets out. This one slows down a little bit. They just call. You should always just call because this information you don't have, it's very possible that they have another queen under there and they got you beat, okay? This is the last card, this is the river card. Instead, they, they burn, and all um, river cards get dealt face down, even if you're all in. 
it, they, they're dealt down. And um, even all in situation after the deal is done, and if they act in turn, they turn it up, people who, who are all in. But in this case, the queens, let's see what the queens got. No, five. And they got a monster. They got a 10, okay? They Happy dance. Huh? Happy, Happy dance. dance. Big one, huge, full houses, and like obvious flushes, stuff like that. This is a really well hidden full house, okay? Um, because they don't know that there's there's a pocket pair to here or for trips. But this person right here is going to lead out because they still have queens on the top showing. So the highest action or the highest hand starts the action. Queens, they're gonna go ahead and bet out. This person's gonna raise them because they have a full house. They're probably gonna call, they're gonna turn over their cords. And then the ace queens, aces and queens are gonna realize that they got beat by a full house and cry, that's all. And just turn over their money and give it to this person and this person's raking in a monster pot. Now, um, it's critical that you use the information that is given to you off of all the cards. If you see when you first start out that there are duplicates on the board of the cards that you're holding, you already know that you've got less outs than you started with. Um, it, it weakens your hand every time something is duplicated. Uh, okay. Before you pull down the winning hand, uh, Tiffany had asked, let's see, when I believe uh, Tiffany asked when uh, with the showing cards, I think. When the nine of clubs, nine of clubs hit, could that person have potentially flush. like represented a flush? Absolutely. Even they were in trouble with the two queens at the bottom. Yep. Absolutely. Um, they totally could represent. Um, but they represented. But this person, remember, at the same time got a queen. At the same time. So the, the potential for them to have three queens under here already beating them, they, even though they could represent that that's a flush, they probably won't uh, because that queen could have gave them a full house. That, that person under here could have had, maybe they had a queen and something else that was on board as well over here. So they, you know, it, it was a hidden full house. Does that make sense? Yeah, gotcha. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, three that yeah, so this they probably wouldn't have gotten so crazy just because the queen came up at the same time. If the queen hadn't have come up, let me just tell you, they'd be all over that pretend I got the flush stuff. It's again a thing of information. All right, so Donna, you want to take over for a second while I um set up another set of hands? Absolutely. Um I learned on Seven Card Stud, which is this game. And uh, this is the game that was, it was a challenge, particularly because of how many cards that you saw. Uh, Lupe, I'm gonna mute you while you're doing that, if you don't mind. Please. Got it. So one of the things that I, I had a challenge with when I, when I was unfamiliar with the game, if you were here before, when I mentioned that I learned on seven card stud is that I knew nothing about poker, nothing at all. I did not know what beat what. As a matter of fact, uh, when we would travel out to Immokalee, Florida, which is out in the Everglades, it was the Seminoles Indian Casino. They, it was not their casino, it was a bingo hall. And they had cards, they put card tables in the bingo hall in 1996. And um, I would go, as we drove out, I would, I would recite one pair, two pair, three of a kind, straight, flush. And poor Gregory, he was such a joy because he never, ever gave me grief about that. Okay, Lupe, I will unmute you. You look like you're ready. 
Are you ready to go, Lupe? I'm ready to go. I okay. actually decided that I wasn't going to even look. I'm not setting these up. We're going to have some a random hand here, okay? Yay. Huh? Yay. Oh, yay? Yay. <laughs> Tell me something. So anyway, so here's everybody already ante. The dealer pulled it in. He's already given us our down cards. He's going to burn the one card. Well, he already did that, okay, because he did that. He brought him in, burned, and they started dealing. So. There's a queen, there's a five of hearts, a nine of spades, and a three of spades. Really ugly cards for a stud, by the way. Usually when you see cards like this, unless you have a monster underneath, they aren't playable, okay? So we're going to peek and see what people got. Uh, so we have an ace of spades, a six of diamonds, and a queen of diamonds up there. Uh, seven of clubs, nine of cl uh, diamonds, and a five of hearts. This is a queen of hearts, a five of spades, a nine of spades, and a king of spades, a deuce of clubs, and a three of clubs. I would yeah. say that that's pretty much an ordinary type of hand, and they're all crappy cards. Right. These are all crappy cards. Now, in both in cash and tournament play, this is a no-brainer. Uh, the three of spades is the lowest card. They are forced to bring it in, so they have to pay $1. At this point, there is no way that this hand is going to call that because they have nothing coordinating they have two spades but you need three spades to call it okay and then hopefully that third spade is like a, a jack or higher at least um you don't want to call this this is never a good idea uh we're going to get back over to here because remember the action goes around to the left um ace queen six Nobody's raised it. I'm the only one showing a face card. Everybody's got crappy cards. I'm going to go ahead and complete it because the information that I got, crappy, crappy, crappy. Nobody's showing a strong face card. I'm the only person. 90% of the times, if you bet this to completion in a tournament, these other people are going to fold because their chips are too valuable. In um, cash games, uh, okay, for sure this person's going away. Look at all those gaps. Can't even make a straight out of that. They'd have to get all kinds of perfect cards to get a straight. This card, the one that had to bring it in, it's going to cost them $3 to stay in that hand with only a, a deuce and a tray and only two spades. They don't even have coordinating high cards. They have coordinating low cards that are a piece of crap, and we know that deuce tray straights are crap, right? So most likely the queen is actually going to take this down at this point and they're going to go away. And that's a good day. Remember, uh, you're always scooping up the antes and that's not a bad thing. It's just like taking the blinds down. Um, there's, there's no chopping. In, yeah. uh, Loopy, yeah. there was a question with the up card. If there was a tie, would you go by rank? So there was a three of spades and three of hearts. So the three of spades would bring it in. Uh, it goes by ranking, but ranking in the low. So it'll be the hearts. The three of spades is a higher rank than the three of hearts. It's clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades. It's the alphabet, right? Clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades. So if this was a, a three of hearts up here, that person would have brought it in, not the three of spades. It goes by the lowest cards. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, so in Raz, it would be the opposite. Yeah, baby. Raz, we're talking low is good, but not in, in stud. Stud is all high. High, 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 high. Okay, I'm going to set up another set. You guys chat. Is this helpful? You guys getting it? Understanding it? You're doing a great job, Lupe. Uh, Sandy saying yes. Okay, good. If you have any questions, please pop them in. Yes, please, and please I, put the questions in. Go ahead and mute me while I shuffle. Yes, ma'am, I will. Yes, 
Yes, Roberta said it's just one card that the whole table can see face up. That's correct. On the first deal, you get two down and one up. So the, the card that is the lowest card on the first round of betting is the one that goes first. In the next round of betting, um, it is the highest card on the board or the highest cards on the board. So it goes first, first time out is lowest. Then from then on, it's the highest card. And Lupe, this is really a good way to do it by just actually playing hands out. So here she comes. Ooh, two fives, one five, a jack of spades and a 10 of diamonds. I will unmute you, Lupe. You're now unmuted. Okay, so this is exactly, and these are random, you guys. I did not set this up, all right? So literally, we have two fives on the board. The five of hearts is lower ranking than the five of spades, so they have to do the bring in. The, the bring in. But before we do any bring ins, let's look and see what people got. Ooh, three, four, five. That's not too bad. We got three coordinating cards. Seven, four, jack. Not coordinating, only two clubs. Pocket nines. And, whew, nice. Pocket tens with an ace, with, with uh, clubs. So, let's look at these in this instance. So, the dealer is going to ask the five of hearts to bring it in. Three, four, five is three to a straight. Not terrible, not fantastic, but not terrible. So they're gonna bring it in for a dollar because it's not worth completing it. Now, if these were all hearts, that would have been three hearts plus three, you know, to a straight, then yeah, that would have been a stronger hand. The five also looks around and realizes one of their fives is gone. So if they're looking for a pair, it's gone, right? And if you look over here, the jack four and seven, now, they aren't gonna even play this hand because a seven and a four does not connect. There's only two to a flush and there's no face cards to complement the jack. So they're gonna go away. Bye-bye. Comes to pocket tens with an ace, they're gonna complete. That's a nice hand. They've got a pocket pair that's 10 and above and they also have two to a, a nut flush draw, okay? So they go ahead and complete it to $4. These, they come over here, they only see a five, but he has a pocket pair of nines. Probably will peel it off. Nines are, I recommend tens and up, um, but nines at this point, mm, you know, with a five showing, one of the fives are gone. They're really only looking for another nine. They don't even have coordinated flush cards, okay? So they can't look to pair up with a second one because one of the fives is gone. Let's say they go ahead and be gambling in the mood to gamble and they go ahead and call that $4. And it's three more dollars for them. Mm, I, Me, I'm not calling it, but people call it all the time. Okay, I'm just, we're gonna say they called it just for this demonstration sake. Okay, next hand, dealer burns. And remember it always starts to the left. Oh my God. Lucky suck, oh my God. <laughs> and now mind you, I didn't set this shit up, okay? <laughs> this is exactly how, how, how stud changes everything on this different streets, okay? So now, if you look around the, the board, information-wise, the only thing that I can tell is that they peeled one off. I don't know if they have a pocket pair underneath to, for them to call that five, but I probably would not have guessed that they had three coordinating to a, to a low or to a low straight. I just, my mind doesn't think that way. <clears throat> um, eight, 10 is over here. This is information. Maybe they're going for a straight. Um, maybe they have a pocket pair under here. What was that? I don't think that it improved their hand in my mind. Then down here, there's two flushes. Okay. Remember they called that bet. They went ahead and called that bet. This is the only one that had to make a decision. These people had a decision already that they were going to call because they had a pocket pair. 
This is a monster hand in a lot of ways too, because they have three nines under here. These guys have four to a straight. They only need an ace or a six to come up for them to catch a straight. But this is information again, right? That there's two spades. And if this one's betting out with the spades, um, but okay, the real action, I'm sorry, let me, let me be technical here. The dealer is going to go to the highest hand at this point. It's 10 8. 10 8. They've got three to a flush and a pair. They're probably betting that. They are giving information that they've got a strong hand, even though they really don't have a super strong hand. But nobody knows that. Because by looking at this, they look pretty good. <laughs> right? If they look at the nine and the five, that's not very strong. A five and a deuce, not even with two. Uh, they're not even uh, the same suit, not looking very strong in their mind. So they bet out, three nines look at this and they say, raise, I'm raising. So now they bet out $4 because remember on, on this street, it's $4 limit. So the, the flop and then the next card, four, four and four, remember that, okay? It's for four, eight purposes, four and four. Four cards, $4. For, uh, this one raised it to $8. This one said, oh my gosh, $8? Okay, that means I have, there's no sixes out here and there's no aces that I can see out here. So that's eight cards right now that can give me my hand that I can remember, remember? And then um, I have three to a flush. Oh my God, okay, I'm gonna call one more time. <laughs> call this one's only going to call this is not a raising hand at that point right but the information that you're thinking in your head is like what the hell did that nine do for this person to raise did they catch a card that had a pocket pair underneath did they catch a four spade to make this a four clutch four card flush draw which is strong what happened there so on the next card, you're gonna to need to really watch this hand to see what they possibly had to, you know, to, to make it a raising hand. Unless they're one of those crazy people that um, just like to push around everybody with nothing. Don't do that instead, it's too expensive. Burn. Start off here. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay. Oh my gosh. Now, guess what? And these are, this is random deal, right? Totally random. I did not set this up. Okay. I literally shuffled and set them out just like if I was the dealer at the table. Okay. Now, the ace is going to start the action because the ace is the highest in the three cards that are information cards, right? They, oh, no, no, I take it back. I lied. This hand starts it because there's a pair. That's the highest. The pocket fives, the dealer's going to go to pocket fives and say, okay, it's on you, pocket fives. They're going to bet that sucker because they now have a full house. Over here, they caught a straight and they have four to a, uh, a straight flush and four to a flush. They think that they're really strong. But they bet out, they, they, this could be two pair, this could be trip fives, for all they know, right? With the information, you just gotta analyze what you see here. So maybe they had, had pocket fives underneath here and they caught that third. So now they're still feeling like they're strong because they have a straight over with the information that they're receiving. So this one bets out, this one raises because they have a straight already and four to a flush. This one over here says there is nothing in this card. I'd have to peel it off. My ace is gone. So even two pair, I would have to catch a 10 or better you know, to do that. Even two pair is probably not going to beat what's going on over here. They have to assume that there's at least trips at this point if they raised it. Okay. So they're going away. Go away. Even though it looked pretty, go away. It gets back over here. This one bet out, this one raises, this one re-raises. Now this one says, holy shit, what do they have? There are they, do they did they fill up already with that five? Did they 
catch trips and they think that's better than my little uh because they know i don't have a flush right they can't have a flush because there's no there's a there's not enough cards to make a flush yet so let's just say they just call okay let's see what happens down starting here Action stays here with the uh, full house or the pair, the pair that's showing. Um, you got to remember that even though they have a pair that's showing, they have one of their fives. So they're not quite sure really what's going on under here. That's a very well hidden full house. Um, this person's going to bet. This one still has a straight. They're probably going to call just because that's the way people are. Okay. So let's see the river burn down, down. At this point, uh, remember they're always, the river's always down. Let's take a peek and see what they picked up. Didn't improve them. Didn't improve them. They're going to bet it out they're probably going to call it because they do have a straight and they're going to whack turn it over and see that he can cat a monster full house um that's a very difficult hand to catch that information from it's a super hard hand uh because originally when there was the ace the the other ones that were betting out they only had a pair of nines and they were just calling they weren't raising at that point they didn't raise until they caught the, the nine so, the, you know, it's difficult to find that information out. But you can see how quickly it looks like crap in the information, but it's a monster hand. You have to watch how people bet. Did, did, are they always aggressive betting? So really it's difficult to know what the heck they have under there. Or is this person like a freaking rock and they only will raise if they've got a monster? You know, so you got to go back to your normal poker skills that that you would have in any game, right? So, stud is all about information, Rem remembering the cards that are no longer in your outs, and um, watching the player. So, I'm going to turn these over. Go ahead and mute me. Any questions? Uh, no straight out questions yet, Lupe, but this is this is really turning out great to have these random cards uh, change so much. And that's one of the things that that I found in in stud. Well, that was all I knew. I mean, that's how I started. I had mentioned in a previous session that I actually dealt out 50,000 hands before I would take a look at a hand. Now, you may think that that's a lot of hands, but uh, think about one of the one of the tasks that I have for myself every year is I go through a thousand hand project. Now, it doesn't take that long in Hold'em because if you're dealing out uh, ten hands, when I say hands, I don't mean uh, one deal is a hand. I deal out all the cards for, let's say, a table of ten and in Hold'em as an example. And I, that would mean that I would see 10 hands, 10 down cards. And I would, I would look at those and see them. And, and in a, a thousand hand project each year, I actually write down what they, saw, they are. But that doesn't take that long. I mean, how many tens are in a thousand? There's a hundred. So actually only deal out a hundred hands to get that. So if you're looking at learning stud, I want you to do the same thing like Lupe is doing here and deal the cards for yourself and go through that process. I'm going to unmute you, Lupe. You may, you may go. You got Okay. So here's another hand. Again, I did not set up the cards. We're just going to take a peek and see what happens. So we have a six of hearts, an eight of spades, a five of spades, and a queen of hearts. Again, if you were in a tournament, 
This always shows really nice and strong because it's a face card, okay? The only time somebody's gonna stay in with that queen is if they've got something going on underneath. So let's take a peek real quick and see what they got. Whoop, pair of sixes. Ace, ace of clubs, jack of spades, eight of spades. King, 10, five of spades. That's a crappy card. Barb saw it. I hate big, middle, little. Terrible, terrible, terrible. This is also terrible. Ace, nine, queen. Informationally, the queen looks really strong, except for the pair of sixes is good. An ace, jack, meh. none of these are really coordinating. There's too many gaps. Um, if that was the spade, uh, ace of spades, that'd have been good. Um, it's too, I call it like big, middle, little. That's like my thing. If you have big, middle, little, get the hell out. It's too hard to coordinate things. Even, even if they're all, unless they were all the same flesh, the same suit, then, then it's okay. But big, middle, little, not good. So in this instance, who would bring it in is the five of spades. They have nothing. They have a big king, a middle 10, and a low spade. Terrible, terrible. They're gonna bring it in for a dollar. The next action is the queen. Now, if the queen is feeling aggressive, nobody knows what they have underneath, remember? If they're feeling aggressive, they might want to complete at this point because the little cards will go away. If that is, um, especially in a tournament, okay? In a tournament, for sure. If that is representing, like, especially if they have an ace, um, and this is like kind of low cards, they're gonna go away. Um, so let's say that this one is being aggressive just for once. They went up to four bucks. The pair says, I'll call the four bucks, the ace, jack, eight. If they're smart, they fold. I'm gonna say this time they're being good. They folded. And the king and the 10 and the five gives up their dollar that they put into the bring in. And now we've got two cards here. We got we got the, the queen. They cannot raise that queen. Even though they have a pocket pair underneath here, they can't raise that because the queen might be a pocket queen. They're just gonna peel off a card and see what happens, okay? Okay, so the dealer burns, puts up a king, and puts up a seven. Uh, Information-wise, there's no information. The only way that that card over there is looking over here saying, why did this six call? call did they have a, a, a pair under here? Or did they have a, a face card that they're trying to match up? In this instance, the high card would be the king. So the, the, the pocket sixes have to use this opportunity to either gain information or to give up. Um, because they bid out and completed. So they might have pocket queens. They might, right? That's the information you have. So the king says, right now under this circumstance, it did not help them, but they still have a pair. If they wanna know what the hell they've got, they're gonna bet this, okay? Now what does that do? It puts the pressure on the queen. If, the, if that person has queens under there, this guy got a king, all of a sudden he thinks, oh shit, he caught a king, right? So that means his kings are bigger than my queens, even on information. So let's just say for this demonstration sake that they checked, or let's say they bet, they bet and they called. Why they would call, they should never call. There's nothing coordinated about that. They got four different suits and nothing that goes together. But let's just say they're being stupid and they called. So let's burn. See what else comes up. Ten of diamonds and an ace of hearts. Stupid just got lucky. Um, so now the ace is on the on the board, and the ace is going to have first action because it's the highest card. They bet because now they have pocket aces. 
if this is your hand right here, the best you got is a pocket pair of sixes, you're folding at this point. There's just no way that you can continue this hand. It doesn't matter because the pocket, the queen could have beat you, definitely an ace could beat you. Don't waste your money by trying to go further on. At this point, go ahead and fold. Does that make sense? You're evaluating your hand, it didn't improve. Same with like even in Hold'em. If you go down to the next, uh, the next street and it doesn't improve and somebody's being aggressive on you and you know you got a really weak hand, guess what? It's time to fold. Time to fold. Bye-bye. And then that lucky sucker, which we all know those lucky suckers, takes the pot. Okay? All right. I think that we're about 10 minutes out. Should we do one more round or should we... Uh, take some questions unless you guys if you don't have any questions we can do that uh, sandy okay. said could the aces check to trap oh absolutely it could sure but remember they only have aces <laughs> you don't know if by this point this person has two pair under here they might have had a pocket pair and picked up another pair with something else um no they wouldn't have had a pocket pair but they could have gotten paired up with with the other cards, depending on what's under there. You just don't know. Um, that would be a very aggressive way to play um, by trapping. Now, if they trapped or by, by checking and then this one, this one, if they're smart, they would have checked too, right behind them and got a free card. Do you wanna see if, what would have happened if they did? Yeah, Roberta said you wouldn't play the king 10, uh, five. No, absolutely, I wouldn't. Um... What? King, uh, Roberta said you wouldn't play the king ten five. It's a king ten six. No, six. I, I, this is a six yeah. and a six. It's pretty yeah. six here. Let's it's just say that that's what happened. This one wanted to be sneaky and trap, and they checked, and this one went ahead and checked right behind them, so there was no action. Okay. Let's see. Okay, we burn. Okay. Now the ace has no clue. <laughs> This is the ugliest freaking card you could possibly see. Um, if the aces want information, they can bet out at this point. And at this point, this one's probably gonna fold. But if they picked up the second pair, they'll probably call them, okay? So it's an information game. Remember, this is all you see. That's uncoordinated, crappy. This is really uncoordinated and crappy. So it's at that point, and as you know, on Fifth Street is the deciding hand on any game in poker. By then, you better dang well know what you're doing. You're folding or you're raising. Oh, uh, uh, Roberta had said, no, no, the hand that folded, the second hand, uh, the second hand up there. King, 10, 5. Oh, no, I wouldn't play that. No, Never. there's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's no coordination. There's no, no suited coordination. There's no pair. There's no connectors, nothing. This is what I call the big, middle, little. The worst cards you can get in stud. Big, middle, little. They, they don't coordinate on you. They, don't, they, don't, they didn't give you anything to a flush. That's not even a good Badoogie hand, and that's not a game I'm going to go into tonight. But <laughs> this, you don't want to ever play something like that. King 10 in, in, as a starting hand in um, Hold'em. Some people play that, but they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to, to not keep cards that aren't connected. And they don't, and then especially if you, your third card doesn't improve your whole cards at all. Oh, R Roberta said that she thought that she, she didn't quite see it because she, she thought that that there was some suited there. Yeah, sometimes uh, even at a table, spades and and clubs clubs used to give me a lot of trouble to see. Yeah. Even when I, I have good good vision, and now my vision is perfect because I had my cataracts done. Yay! Um, but th they that does sometimes give me a problem with seeing on at the table with this type of hands. And if you are not somebody who wears glasses and you're playing um, a stud game and you're having, you can see all the hands that are like from this half of the table, but you're starting to lose a little bit of fuzz, you know, uh, blur vision towards the hands that are at the other end of the table. 
you can use my, my optometrist told me go get some readers okay because I have good vision usually in distance I suck anything that's close it's hard for me so I wear readers he goes go get some readers in the smallest like the one the one power whatever it is you know how they have one two two and a half three whatever uh, the one it's he said go start with one and and if that doesn't work go to 1.5 because you shouldn't have to go to two but take that one put your glasses on and it'll bring you in just enough to clear it clear it up and that worked for me it's i'm i'm too old now and too far gone and it's time for me to really get serious and buy real glasses instead of all my fun funky reader glasses that i love but um i'm going to tell you that it's very expensive to uh don't be proud in this game don't let your ego get in the way if you can't tell for sure what the heck's going on down there ask you're exactly right and sherry says she uses the 125 power readers to magnify glasses at the table and it works great for her perfect perfect so my optometrist was correct <laughs> but uh i'm gonna tell you um stud can be very expensive uh because there's a lot more hidden information um and and you're guessing based off of what you're seeing um so you have to value your own hand based off the information you see on the board um and then if you see somebody being really aggressive just take a minute and think what what do they have what could be such a monster hand under there that um you know that they're being so aggressive over it and should i stay in based off of what you have is your hand a monster too if your hand is a monster too freaking raise that thing but if it's ugh, you're not quite sure um it's a good hand but it's not a monster hand you might just want to call somebody who's trying to be aggressive and to push you off um trying to think of what else on stud yeah, if you have a question, please put it in. Um, Cheryl says, I got a prescription for computer arm length distance glasses, and I had them tinted and use them at poker. And, and Cheryl, I actually originally got specifically poker glasses. My husband did too. We actually went into the optometrist because I didn't need them for reading. I didn't need them for driving, but I needed them for that mid distance. And I went into the I thought, I don't know if it's going to work. I took cards in and I said, I want to find specific cards for the poker table. Now, fortunately, the optometrist was a poker player. Oh, nice. And so we got specific cards for the poker table, just for the poker table. And um, they were really good. Remember that most of the cards that are being used in poker are for Hold'em. And, um, and when they start using mixed game, decks they're the bigger cards with the you know the ones that have the square in them <laughs> I don't, this one doesn't because this is a ginormous deck but i'm talking about um i think they're called bridge cards right the ones that are they have the bigger numbers and there's like a square rectangle in them they're just larger print um so roberta says copag c-o-p-a-g well that's the company yeah and she they, said yes bridge yeah those size cards if you are playing consistently in a room that caters to people who play mixed game, go ahead and put some pressure on them to get the bigger cards, first of all, um, because in, uh, in, especially in stud, you're really only having to manipulate two in your hand. You know, the rest are out on the board, but they're easier to see. And the other thing that you can pressure them for, and it's harder these days, um, is to get a stud table put into their room where it's an eight seated table because it allows the players to really see all the cards and it restricts the game to eight people. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that that's an uphill battle. <laughs> Unless you get some rooms where they play a lot of that kind of a game. I haven't found that to be the case. Uh, if they do play mixed games, they play all the mixed games. So it could be Omaha and it could be stud and it could be low, uh, low ball, or it could be, um, a deuce to seven triple draw. I mean, those are all 
um, mixed games, but really it's the ones where you have to see the information on the other side of the table. Uh, and, Cheryl says that Faded J is the new brand used by WPT and they are bigger and color coded. Oh, wow. And I, yeah, it, it, well, Florida has bigger numbers on the cards. I guess they figured we have the largest number of retired yeah. and so our cards are bigger. And it's, it's startling when you go someplace else out of state and there's this little tiny car numbers on the cars and I go we're, we're all over Las Vegas, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of the poker, the between California and Las Vegas are the largest poker populations in the country and they all use those cards. In the, oh, my, in I'm the sorry, my, I was going to say Mike Caro was the one who originally said, let's color code the cards. Oh, nice. Nice. It's harder for me when they use the different ones because I forget what they, the color means. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's really it's really but weird. you get used to it just like anything you know you get used to uh, what you're doing and um, this can be a very very fun game and what Do I did over here Donna while I was setting up the cards just take a deck on any of these things go ahead and watch this video again it will be up tomorrow you can you know play it out you can rewind it you can do whatever you want to do um, make sure that you just get your cards and Put them around your kitchen table or put them around your coffee table and just look at hands, look at hands, look at hands and think about what you see, what kind of information you're getting off of them and, you know, make decisions about starting hands. Remember what I said about the starting hands, you need to have at minimum a pair and uh, you have to have or, or con coordinated cards, three, you know, um, suited cards, uh, three straight cards in a row connected. Um, even stronger if a couple of them are at least suited, you know, so um, don't pay, play anything that isn't coordinated, even if somebody's just rolling over the table and they're being as lucky as luck can have, and you just want to get them because they're one of those irritating players. Uh, Cheryl, the video is going to be recorded, it's, it'll be on the YouTube channel for WPA, Women's Poker Association. Yeah, and but I will put this on if you go to the WPA or WPA.poker and you go to the events page and scroll down to you see the mixed game madness, click on that, and it has already all this the previous weeks on there. I embedded them onto the website. So you can go there. You don't even have to try and figure it out on YouTube. Um, they're already there for you. So this one will also be there for you. Yeah, Cheryl says you wanted to watch the one on Raz, and I, I loved Raz. I, I love Raz so much. I really, really love Raz. And he's just you are doing such a great job with this, Lupia. Thank you so oh, thank much for, you. for letting me help co-host. It is an absolute enormous amount of information tried to, tried to be um, given to you in one hour. And I don't expect that to happen. What I expect is just to kind of give you an overview of what this is, what this game is. And then for you to go and Google stud google raz google omaha any of the games that you don't know how to play there is a plethora of information out there youtube videos um books great books um summer Cheryl, it's, it's, it's wpa.poker yes no dot com or 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 any of that it's wpa.poker poker is the the com part it's all fancy yeah i'm just yes, yes roberta raz is dealt the same but it's the lowest one that wins. It's it's the so complete wheel. opposite of stud. And um, if you can review the Omaha high low video, it'll be helpful when we do next week because next week will be stud high low. And it's remember that counting backwards thing that we had we discussed in Omaha. It'll give you a refresher. And it's a qualifier just like like Omaha in eight an eight uh you have to have three cards on the community cards in your of uh, information cards um that are an eight and lower plus the ones in your hands in order to have a low hand. So that's a more complex game because you're trying to read two different a high and a low and we'll go into that next week. So I guess we're kind of at the end of our evening tonight. I hope it was informational for you. I, I really encourage you guys to, to uh, practice some of these other games other than Hold'em because I believe that when you get good at other games, you become a better Hold'em player. So um, if you have any questions at all about tonight or any of the other lessons, just put it in the invent page that we have 
set up and put your questions there and we'll answer them. We can do discussions right there on the event page. Um, There's one last question. Oh, what's that? Yeah, uh, Roberta said, so stud high low is RAS and stud combined? Well, yeah, it's low game and high game combined. Yes, we're going to play two games in one at the same time. So it'll be dealt the same way. It's just that you're going to have two different types of winning possibilities, either in your high hand or in a low hand. And it's a split game in that if there is a low qualifier in the hands that are dealt, then uh, then the pot will get split between a high hand and a low hand. And you don't get to take it all. Instead, you take it all. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, again, thank you, Donna Blevins, very much for co-hosting with me from BigGirlPoker.com. And of course, WPA.Poker. If you have any questions, go to the event page. And I'm Lupe. And I just, I t uh, recently um, been, uh, what do you call that? Voted in or something. I was the executive director for the WPA and our president of the WPA stepped down. Um, she's retired and she wants to be more retired. <laughs> so I have been placed in the president position of the WPA. We are so fortunate. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to be taking over the helm of, of the direction of the WPA for a while. And uh, maybe that'll change later. But for now, that's where we're at. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. I know your time is precious and I appreciate that you're trying to elevate your game and yay women in poker. And uh, we have a very exciting uh, project that's going to be being rolled out here in the next week. And so be watching WPA uh, either on Facebook, on Twitter, or at the website because you're going to want to know what's going on. All right, guys, have a good night and we'll see you. Good night. Good night.